after the brief discussion on microwave signal properties and basic structure of microwave system let's discuss on transmitting media a transmission line is the simple twin wire line as shown in a figure twin wire or transmission lines are the only way of transporting signals in radio frequency circuits single wire transport is not encouraged transmission lines are dual conductor lines that act as transverse electromagnetic mode wave guides for electromagnetic waves a transmission line is closely spaced and separated by air non conductive spaces are used to keep the distance between the two wires constant a transmission line is used for the transmission of electrical power from generating substation to the various distribution units it transmits the wave of voltage and current from one end to another the transmission line is made up of a conductor having a uniform cross section along the line air act as an insulating or dielectric medium between the conductors for safety purpose the distance between the line and ground is much more the electrical tower is used for supporting the conductors of the transmission line for transmitting high voltage over long distance high voltage direct current is used in the transmission line the performance of transmission line depends on the parameters of the line the transmission line has mainly four parameters resistance inductance capacitance and shunt conductance these parameters are uniformly distributed along the line hence it is also called the distributed parameter of the transmission line the inductance and resistance form series impedance whereas the capacitance and conductance form the shunt admittance in this class we will try to understand transmission line equations consider parallel wire with length z two wire line is divided into small segments this small segment length is delta z this small spec segment of length looks like as below line each two wire line having high frequency inductance and one and one resistance and there is a capacitance between two wire line and there can be a charge leakage through conductance the inductance resistance conductance and capacitance since we are talking about small length delta z of line so unit of length is henry per meter unit of resistance is ohm per meter unit of capacitance is farad per meter unit of conductance is mop per meter therefore we can say unit of the parameter is per unit length to get absolute value of inductance in henry i have to multiply the henry per meter with unit length that is meter therefore 
here to get the absolute value of the parameter I have to multiply with the unit length delta z. Based on uniform distributor circuit theory, the schematic circuit of two wire line or two conductor transmission line is as shown below. As I told before, a two wire line is divided into small segments. Each segment having the length delta z. A small length of the line can be represented by an equivalent symmetrical T network with constant parameters R, L, G and C per unit length as shown in figure. Where R resistance per unit length which takes into account the ohmic loss in the line conductor. L inductance per unit length which takes into account the magnetic energy stored around the conductor. G conductance per unit length which takes into account the dielectric loss between the line conductors. C. Capacitances per unit length, which appears due to two conductors at different potential and represents the electric energy storage. It is assumed that positive, it is assumed that wave propagation takes place in positive Z direction. To get the transmission line equation in voltage form, apply the KVL to the center loop. Apply the KVL to the center loop. Voltage at this point is V of Z comma T which is equal to current in this loop is center loop is I Z comma T into R delta Z plus inductance component plus voltage at this point. V Z plus delta Z comma T can be represented by these equations. Rearranging the equation 1 by dividing delta z and then omitting the argument z comma t we get v equal to i r plus l dou i by dou t plus V plus dou V by dou Z. So V V cancels. Therefore, we will get 0 equal to IR plus L dou I by dou T plus dou V divided by dou Z which is equal to minus dou V by dou Z is equal to IR plus L dou I divided by dou t. Using KCL for point B, we get current at this point uh, I z comma t which is equal to voltage across the conductance that is V z plus delta z comma t plus capacitor and voltage across the capacitor plus current in this loop. So V Z plus delta Z comma T can be represented by 
this equation. Similarly, V of Z plus delta Z comma T can be represented by this equation and I of Z plus delta Z comma T can be represented by this equation. From the previous slide, consider the third equation that is i of z comma t equal to this equal to this equation and rearrange the equation 3 will give us this equation that is when the i of z comma t and this i of z comma t cancels and uh, outside the bracket term will be multiplied with the inside the terms we will get this equation this equation is divided by delta z Above equation is divided by delta z, we will get 0 left hand side and in the right hand side, what is remain only v of z, comma t and g. In the next term, 1 delta z is cancels, then here another 1 delta z is cancels and the delta z cancelled. And here again delta z cancelled. So remained equations equation is this. Equate delta z tends to 0 in the above equation, this equation, and vomit z comma t. We get we get 0 equal to Vg plus when delta z tends to 0, this term becomes 0 plus omit z comma t argument dou v by dou t plus Again, when the delta z tends to 0, this term becomes 0 plus dou i by dou z by omitting argument z comma t. Therefore, remind equation 0 equal to vg plus c dou v by dou t plus dou i by dou z which is equal to minus dou i by dou z equal to vg plus c dou v by dou t. By differentiating the equation 2 with respect to z, we will get the equation number 5. So what is the equation number 2? Minus dou v by dou z is equal to I R plus L do I by do T this is the equation number two. This equation number two or e equation number two is differentiating with respect to Z, we will get the fifth equation. 
Similarly, when differentiating the equation number 4 with respect to t, we will get the equation number 6. What is the equation number 4? Minus dou i divided by dou z is equal to vg plus c dou v by dou t. This is the equation number 4. By differentiating the equation number 4 with respect to t, we will get the equation number 6. After substituting the equation number 4 and equation number 6 in equation number 5, we will get the transmission line equation in voltage form. So substitute equation number 4 and equation number 6 in equation number 5. Number 4 and 6 are substituting in the equation number 5. What we will get? Do square V divided by do Z square is equal to here in the R into do I by do Z. In the do I by do Z substitute the equation number 4. plus L and substitute the equation number 6 that is L into G dou V by dou T plus C dou square v divided by dou t square. By rearranging this equation, we will get the equation this. And again, if we rearrange the, this equation, we will get the transmission line equation in voltage form that is equal to R into GV plus RC plus LG into dou V by dou T plus LC into dou square V divided by dou T square. Here we can observe we have neglected minus sign of the from the fourth equation. When we are substituting the fourth equation in the equation number 5, we are neglected minus sign sin because, because wave propagation takes place in positive z direction so that we can neglect the negative sign here. This is our voltage form equation. In the last class, we have derived transmission line equation in voltage form. Now, we will derive the transmission line equation in current form. Firstly, differentiate the equation number 2 with respect to T. We will get the equation number 7. What is the equation, um, equation 2? Minus dou V by dou Z is equal to R i plus l dou i by dou t equation 2 so equation 2 we have derived in the last class by applying the cable to the transmission line 
circuit. Now, if we differentiate the equation number 2 with respect to T, we will get the equation number 7. Similarly, differentiate the equation 4. What is the equation 4? Do I by do z is equal to vg plus c do v by do t this is equation number 4 equation number 4 we have derived in the last class by applying the KCL to the transmission line circuit now, if we differentiate the equation number 4 with respect to z, we will get the equation 8. Now, substitute the equation 2 and equation 7 to the equation number 8. We will get the transmission line equation in current form. Do square i divided by do z square is equal to g replace the do v by do z in the 8th equation by second equation to equation number 2 that is r into i plus l do i by do t plus c dou by dou t of dou v by dou z replaced by equation number 7 that is r into dou i by dou t plus l dou square i dou t square by rearranging the equation number 9 we will get the current equation of transmission line The voltage and current on the line are the functions of both position Z and time T. The instantaneous line voltage and current can be expressed as below, where VFZ and IFZ are complex quantities of sinusoidal functions of position Z on the line, uh, line and are known as phases. The phases give the magnitude and phase of sinusoidal function at each position of z and expressed as below two equations where v plus and i plus indicate complex amplitudes in the positive z direction v minus and i minus indicate complex amplitudes in the negative z direction where the gamma is the propagation constant and gamma equal to alpha plus beta where gamma is the propagation constant Alpha is the attenuation factor or constant in nipples per unit length. Beta is the phase constant in radians per unit length. To find out the transmission line equations in phase of form of the frequency domain, consider the transmission line with the length of delta z. When we apply the voltage to the source, the current at this loop is I and the current at this loop is I plus delta I. With a small change in the length delta Z, there is, a, there is a small change in the voltage that is V plus delta V. So what is the value of the delta V? To find out the value of the delta V, consider the first loop that is minus R delta z plus j omega l delta z y minus as we know that 
the voltage to the source always greater than the V plus delta V. Therefore, delta V is minus. Now, apply the limit. Limit delta Z tends to 0. Delta V become delta V by delta Z is equal to minus R plus J omega L into I. Sorry, I forgot to write here into I. Equation number 1. This one can be write like this. Right? dV by dz equal to a minus z into i. Impedance. So what is the impedance? Impedance is the r plus j omega r. So what is the small value of the delta i? Small value of the current. What is delta i? Equal to consider this loop. Delta i is consider the second loop minus g delta z plus j omega C delta Z into V. So limit delta Z tends to 0. Then delta I divided by delta Z equal to minus G plus J omega C into V. So this equation can be right like this D I divided by DZ is equal to minus Y into V. What is that? Admittance. Admittance is equal to G plus J omega C. Equation number three. Now differentiate the equation two with respect to z. That is dv by dz is equal to minus z into i, which is equal to minus r plus j omega r into i. Differentiate with respect to z, we will get is equal to minus r plus j omega l di by dz, which is equal to minus r plus j omega l minus g plus j omega c into v so this is the one of the transmission line equation in phase of form that is equal to minus gamma square into v where gamma is propagation constant that is root of admittance into impedance that is equal to root of r plus j omega l 
D plus J omega C. Similarly, differentiate the equation 3 with respect to Z dA by dz equal to minus admittance into V which is equal to minus D plus J omega C into V differentiate with respect to Z di by dz square is equal to minus g plus j omega c into dv by dz which is equal to minus g plus j omega c minus r plus j omega l into i so therefore d square i divided by d z square is equal to gamma square into v so gamma square into into i this is the another transmission line equation sorry here that should be a plus right minus of r plus j omega l into minus of g plus j omega c it should be equal to plus gamma square Therefore, following four equations are the transmission line equations in phase of form of the frequency domain, where Z is the impedance, which is given by R plus J omega L, Y is the admittance, G plus J omega C, gamma is the propagation constant that is given by root of Z into Y, which is equal to alpha plus J beta, where alpha is the attenuation constant, beta is the phase constant. R, L, G and C are the primary constant parameters of the transmission line. For a lossless transmission line, R equal to G equal to 0, then the transmission line equations are expressed as following four equations, where V and I are expressed in the below two equations. Propagation constant that is gamma, gamma equal to root z into y. Z is impedance, y is admittance. Impedance of the transmission line in terms of the primary constants is given by r plus j omega l and y is equal to g plus j omega c. So gamma is equal to root of z into y that is root r plus j omega l plus g plus j omega c. In the second line keep the j omega and lc outside root of j omega and lc outside we will get the equation as in the second line. For in the third line we have used the binomial theorem. As we know that, what is the binomial theorem? 1 plus a x to the power n is equal to 1 plus n into a x plus In this equation, root of 1 plus r divided by j omega l into 1 plus g divided by j omega c. For that equation, 
for that term we are applying the binomial expansion when we are applying the binomial expansion we will get the equation like this that 1 plus half r divided by j omega l into 1 plus half into g divided by j omega c the from the third term from the third term of the binomial expansion we will uh, we will get a very very less value that's why we are neglecting here then again simplify the third line of the expression we will get the fourth line and again simplify we will get the propagation constant equation what is the propagation constant half of half into r root of c divided by l plus g into root divided by l root of l divided by c plus j omega root lc where alpha is half into r root c by l plus g root l by c beta is omega root lc because propagation constant is equal to alpha plus j beta characteristic impedance that is z not is given by root z divided by y z is equal to r plus j omega l y equal to g plus j omega c in from the first to second line keep the root l by c outside we will get the second line equation from the second to third line we are applying the binomial expansion and simplified z not equation is root l by c 1 plus half of r divided by j omega l minus g divided by j omega c z not is approximately equal to root l by c for lossless line since we know that r equal for the lossless line r equal to g equal to zero then phase velocity phase velocity is given by omega divided by beta which is equal to 1 by root lc the product of lc is independent of size and separation of the conductors and depends on permeability and permittivity of the insulating medium 